Hiya, this is a third lesson in the algebraic fractions pack, and we're moving on to partial fractions. Before we do partial fractions, we'll look at the reverse of it, which is just combining two fractions together. So if you look at the first example, I've got x plus 3 and x minus 1 on the bottom. So that will be the common denominator. If you remember from school, you multiplied that way. So it's two lots of x minus 1 plus three lots of x plus 3. There. So that will simplify. Put the bottom down first. I've got two lots of x plus three lots of x. So I've got 5x. I've got two lots of minus 1 and then three lots of 3. So I've got minus 2 plus 9 is plus 7. And that's it. That's done. Nothing else will factorise or cancel down there. Right, now then, let's have a look at this next example. Now, you might want to put x lots of x minus 2 all cubed as your common factor, your common denominator. But it isn't quite right. You're kind of making it tougher than you need to. Because the x minus 2 goes into there. So it shouldn't be... Um, x minus 2 all cubed, it should only be x minus 2 squared, there, because the x minus 2 goes into it. Right, so let's have a look. So I've got x minus 2 all squared on the bottom, so the only bit missing from the common denominator is x, so it'll be 2 lots of x. So that's that term dealt with. Then let's look at the next one. It's got an x on the bottom, so the only thing missing is an x minus 2 all squared. There. So that's that term dealt with. Then I've got the minus 1. Now if I look at this bottom here, it's x minus 2. If I compare it to the bottom of the other one, it's missing an x, and it's also missing an x minus 2. There. If I try and tidy up the top, part, the top line, I've got a 2x, I've got one lot of x minus 2 all squared, which will be x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then I've got a minus x times x, so that's a minus x squared, and a minus x times my minus 2, which is a plus 2. All that is over x, x minus 2 all squared. So we'll look at the top line. I've got an x squared taken x squared. So that goes, I've got a 2x minus 4x plus 2x on the end. So that goes, so I'm only left with this 4 here over x lots of x minus 2 all squared. There you go. So that's combining them as a single fraction. But what we want to do is reverse the operation. We want to split it. It's called partial fractions. It helps us for integration, but it also helps us for binomial. Um, uh, I've forgotten now. For binomial stuff, never mind. It'll come back to me eventually, I guess. Right, now then, the way to do it. That bottom line is, if I factorise that, it's x minus 4, x plus 3, there. Now, each linear factor, each bit, could possibly have its own uh, fraction. So that's the same as a over x minus 4 plus b over x add 3. If I multiply <coughs> both sides by x minus 4, x plus 3 on the top, it cancels off the left-hand side. And I'm just left with x plus 24. If I times this fraction here by x minus 4, x plus 3 on the top, the x minus 4s cancel, and I just end up with a lots of x plus 3. If I look at this one here, if I multiply it by x minus 4 and x plus 3, then the x plus 3s cancel, and I'm just left with b lots of x minus 4. I need to find the numbers now that work. So what I do is, I'm going to choose 
x values that make a bracket equal to zero. So if you look in the first bracket here, to make that equal to zero, I'm going to use x equals minus three. So when x equals minus three, I've got minus three plus 24 is a lots of minus three add three plus b lots of minus three minus four. So minus three plus 24 is 21. That just disappears because it's zero. And I've got minus 7b. So that means that minus 3 is b there. Right, now then, let's have a look at the next one. So to make that bracket equal to 0, I'd choose x equals 4 there. So if I do 4 plus 24 is a lots of 4 plus 3 plus b lots of 4 minus 4. I've got 28 is equal to 7a. That one disappears. So I'm just left with 4 for a. I found both my missing numbers. So as a nice little kind of ender, I'm just going to write it out as the fractions. So a is 4. Oops, it's a minus. Minus 3 lots of x add 3. And this allows me to integrate it into a log, which you've not done yet. Um, and also to look at binomial expansions. So that's example 2 done. Oh, sorry, example 1. Right, let's have a look at example 2. I've got three different bits here. Same idea, I've got my common denominator, I times through by my common denominator, it goes on the left hand side. The only thing missing from there is x plus 7 and 2x minus 3. The only thing missing from here is x minus 3, 2x minus 3. And the only thing missing from here is x minus 3, x plus 7. Choose nice numbers, because you know, to get rid of anything with an x plus 7, I'd use minus 7. To get rid of anything with a 2x minus 3, I'd use 3 over 2. To get rid of anything with an x minus 3, I'd use 3. So if I choose x is 3 first, I've got 37 lots of 3 minus 81 is a lots of 3 plus 7, 2 lots of 3 minus 3. Each of these next bits, because I get x minus 3 is in, they disappear. So I don't need to use that. So I should get um, 30 is 30a. That is 10. But if I try x is minus 7, if I sub in x is minus 7, I get minus 340 on the left. If I use minus 7, the A and the C disappear. And I've got B lots of, if I put minus 7 into there, I've got B lots of minus 10 times by minus 17. So I've got minus 340 is 170B minus 2 is B. Yeah. There. Then, if I try x is two, uh, x is three over two. There, it gives me minus fifty one over two is equal to minus fifty one over four. Lots of. Now I've used the x is three over two, so it's got rid of a, it's got rid of b, but it's going to find c. Now that would lead to two being c. And I've got my two numbers. I would rewrite this with a being 10, b being minus 2, and c being 2. But the recording's running out, so I've got to stop now.